if it's okay with you, I kind of want to pivot and ask you about what you're going into now, which is probably the most popular and controversial and maybe one of the biggest things that'll change our entire lives. It's what's happening with crypto. It's what's happening with the metaverse, what's happening with NFTs. This, this shit's going to change the world. Yeah. It's very controversial. It's very, you know, hit and miss and a lot of things. There's so many things. People like I, I get flooded with information about this NFT, this NFT, or this crypto, this crypto, you sure. know, and the, the metaverse and this and this is there's so much. What's what's the next phase for you with that? Like why are you diving into that that almost atmosphere with all that? Uh, yeah, crypto is crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And and when it when people say it's controversial, I think it's controversial from two standpoints. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's controversial for people who don't understand it. Mm -hmm because it's a change, right? Like right. cell phones were controversial. The internet was controversial. Shit that changes the way people live life. Yeah. Television was controversial. Yeah, true. Right? Uh, it's controversial for people who don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely controversial for big banks and governments. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they don't understand that it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. Like blockchain as a technology, it's not, it's not a possibility anymore. Mm -hmm. It's an in inevitability. Mm. It's going to happen. It's going to change the way we live our life. Right. It's going to change the way the world is. It's going to improve and enhance the way the world is. Like think simple things like recording deeds of property or medical records. Like think if you were on a trip in Africa yeah. and you fall down and hurt yourself and that person needs to know at the medical office in Ghana yeah. what you're allergic to, then not a way they could figure that out. If all medical records were on a blockchain, decentralized, they're unhackable. Right. And you had a, a keychain or a thumbprint or whatever that unlocked mm. a private key that allowed somebody anywhere in the world to access your medical records. Wow. Like it's just a better way. Dude, I was thinking about like uh, just a little pin in that like I was driving, my wife called me, she's like, Hey, have you seen my wallet? I'm like, Hello, she <laughs> she's driving behind me, she's like, I don't have my license. I'm like, Well, let's turn around and get it. I'm like, I can't wait for the li driver's yeah, license. If to that be was an on NFT. a blockchain. I'm like, wait for that to be an NFT yeah. where it could just be on your phone. You just pull it up, the dude <laughs> scans it, it's like, Yep, you're good. Exactly. Insurance. Yeah. All of those things. Oh, yeah. And it's mm. a better way of storage because it's decentralized, mm. right? But the decentralization of it. Like at the end of the day, you've heard me say it at a couple of events. It was actually Bridger Pennington's dad who said it mm -hmm. at an event I was sitting with him, but he was like, Bet the best business ever created in mankind was the Federal Reserve. It was some oh rich gosh, dudes yeah. that said, hey, <laughs> we're going to create a private business mm -hmm. and we're going to print on paper currency for the world's superpower and we're going to charge their population for that like fucking genius dude people don't know that the federal reserve is not a part of the federal government yeah, it's a private business like, greatest business ever invented and they sell name it paper, the federal reserve right sell paper to the world's superpower and get paid for it like, <laughs> genius yeah. so i can't be mad at it right but when you look at that it's all centralized and controlled right the banks when you look at the banks and who owns the banks and the wealthiest families in the world and you can go deep into this shit mm -hmm. and you can see why like um if you look at wars like there's only yeah. been six countries i think in the world that didn't have um a rockefeller bank in it mm. iraq syria Within 12 months of us invading those two countries, they had a Rockefeller bank in it. Wasn't it like Gaddafi or whatever who was trying to do that? And then uh, Saddam Hussein was trying to implement his own currency yep. based off of And yep. they tried to back it by something. And they were trying to go out. So most people don't know in, in the world, the only way you can buy oil is with dollars. So if you're the Chinese government, the Russian government, the Iraqi government, and you want to buy oil, you have to send your currency to the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. They they so give I you dollars, yeah. and then you can use your dollars to buy oil. So the world is on a dollar standard for oil. Wow. Also, the only two countries to ever try to go off that, Iraq and Syria. Mm. So when you look at that, you like I don't I don't believe in cons like the world is what it is. Sure. So there's no reason to get lost in that mm -hmm. shit. But at the end of the day, there's an element of centralization and control that right. happens there. Like we're seeing some of that with COVID and right. all of that shit. So when you look at blockchain, it's decentralized. They yeah. have no ability to control it. Mm -hmm. And when the government comes out and says all this nonsense about we're going to implement all these policies and we're going to do away with Bitcoin, like no, you're not. Mm -hmm. And the only reason they're saying that is because they're scaring the masses mm -hmm. and creating enough fear mm -hmm. that there will be a lack of adoption from the masses long enough that they can try to figure out how to get their piece of it. Mm -hmm. The gut, like there, it's it's not even a question. Will we have a digital dollar someday? At the end of the day, if you think about the business of government, yeah. right? China already is starting to implement this. Like in China, in major cities, Shanghai, if you want to give a beggar 
uh, t- like some money, you scan their WeChat and you give them money. And why? Because the government taxes you for that transaction. Oh. So you think about the dollar, you think about all the cash run businesses, nail salons, hair salons, transactions that the government gets no tax on because they're paper yeah. currency transactions. Yeah. When, when they implement a digital dollar, it's not a good thing for you and I. Right. It's a, we lose any, like there's no, it's complete transparency in every yeah. transaction that exists. Was it called the Fed coin or something like that? Yeah, right? whatever they call it. You yeah. won't have to file your taxes because every time you do a transaction, they'll tax you, tax you. Like there'll be a hundred percent taxation. Everyone will pay the appropriate taxes because if it's all digitally registered, they there's can no tax choice. every transaction. Mm. And so it's not that it's not better for them. It's better for them. It's just somebody else created it first was smart enough to launch it decentralized and anonymously into the world. Mm. And now it's taken this shape where, you know, like market cap of crypto is higher than, than the stock market. Mm. And bro, the U S government's one of the largest holders of, of crypto, by the way. What? Yeah, for sure. I did not know that. Yeah. The U S government is one of the largest holders of crypto. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So all the nonsense and propaganda you hear and all the it's controversial is just people who have a control. Like, so we just sold a company for, you know, whatever we sold it for. It was a part cash, part stock deal. So it didn't all come out in, in cash, which is a good thing because the company we merged with is going to go public in the next couple of years for like three to $5 billion. And then we'll have another nine figure, figure exit with that. So it wasn't a bad thing, but yeah. at the end of the day, just the time it takes to close a deal like that, where the funding banks were Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, and then they got to wire money into a mid, uh, uh, interim bank, and then they wire money to this bank, and then they got to wire money to our company bank, and then our company bank has to wire money to our individual companies, and then we can actually get that money. There's a 26-day process from those banks putting a hold on our money. Why do they put a hold on it? Because they make interest on it while they're holding it in their bank. Right. Mm. So with crypto, I've done transactions where I brokered some mining equipment deals of different things where it's a, a, let's call it a $10 million transaction where company A sends me crypto. I keep my little piece for brokering the deal. I send it to company B. They have a contract and it takes place in about 15 minutes from a Starbucks. (laughs) It's just a better way. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. It's a better functioning mechanism. So with that, What's crazy about, as you asked me about crypto and the metaverse, is it's literally like digitally recreating our world. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've seen like Justin Bieber did a metaverse concert, 10.7 million attendees to watch his avatar sing for 30 minutes. No, I did right? not see that. There will be a day where the car that you own in the metaverse is as equally as valuable or more valuable than the cars you have in your garage. Let me let me ask you about that because there's multiple metaverses. Metaverse is the name of Facebook's, but then there's... I believe called sandbox and wait till yeah, Google. Yeah. Not, so there's going to be like these basically just different universes. We could call them yep. that are going to be created. Right. Yep. So does that devalue what it is? Cause right now it's just the metaverse. Cause they're probably the first, but is it, does it devalue when all these other companies make their own? No, I mean, think of it like the business you're in. There's Amazon, there's Walmart, right? Right. Some brands, do a deal with Walmart, Walmart. Mm-hmm. some brands do a deal with Amazon. Mm-hmm. So if I want that brand, I go to Amazon. If I want that deal, well, I go to walmart.com. So it's going to be the same competitive landscape. You have a lot launch in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And that like at the end of the day, it, like when people ask me, is it a risky time to get into crypto? Absolutely. Yeah. It's still like, but was it a risky time to buy a domain when you could have bought google.com or nike.com <laughs> or ford.com? Yeah. Yeah, but if you would have bought them, you'd have made millions of dollars. Yeah. But people who did buy them and sat on them and then sold them for millions, like they were early adopters. They took right. a risk. They yeah. bought something early. Right. Mm-hmm. They got into a space early and they were rewarded because of it. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing people are missing. Like everyone, like my kids, my daughters have to do reports for me on crypto. Like I don't pay their allowance in fiat. I pay it in crypto because at the end of the day, the single largest wealth creating event in our lifetime and our kids lifetime will be digital. Mm -hmm. It will be what's happening right now because you're recreating an entire world Mm -hmm. and an entire experience for humanity inside a universe that's uncreated right now. Mm -hmm. So all of it's in this creation phase. Mm -hmm. And I believe there'll be a day where you're wearing a really cool pair of sunglasses. You're in a 
augmented reality or a metaverse experience. Mm -hmm. You go to some shopping mall, you walk up the mall, you have your avatar, you have a body scanner at home so it could perfectly match your avatar and you can try on Gucci's latest whatever and you can see how it fits and you can buy one for your avatar and you can buy one that they'll ship to your house. Mm. And that's how we'll shop. 